Here we witness both science and art, intertwined, revealing truths too vast for words alone. In 1899, a German biologist named Ernst Haeckel gave us such a vision with art forms in nature. Over five years from 1899 to 1904, he unveiled nature's hidden wonders, from the microscopic radiolarens to the majestic sweep of a bat's wing, a testament to the symmetry of life itself, and with life is the shadow of death, for there is dichotomy in this episode. Ernst Haeckel was a man torn between worlds. Born in 1834, he trained as a doctor, wandered Italy's shores dreaming of art, then found his soul ignited by Darwin's On the Origin of Species in 1859. By 1862, he was a zoologist at the University of Vienna, sketching jellyfish and sea anemones from Mediterranean voyages. His hands, guided by lithographer Adolf Gilch, who turned these sketches into masterpieces, one of them being the Desmonema Anaseth, a jellyfish named for his late wife, Anna Seth. These rippled into the world of art, feeding the Art Nouveau movement's hunger for nature's curves and flourishes. Figures like René Bennett at the 1900 Paris Exposition, his Porte Monumentale echoing Haeckel's radiolarens. Bennett's design was heavily influenced by natural forms. The decorative elements incorporated motifs resembling shell forms, vertebrae, and other organic structures, aligning with the Art Nouveau movement's emphasis on nature-inspired aesthetics. Or perhaps Emile Gallet, who masterfully infused his glass creations with the vitality of marine life, crafting pieces that seemed to pulse with the essence of sea anemones. An artistic marvel, lithographs and halftones that capture nature's rhythm, each line a model on order and chaos. Haeckel wasn't just an artist, he was also Darwin's champion in Germany, often called the German Darwin, along with being a marine biologist, philosopher, physician, and zoologist. His plates introduced new species like those radiolarens, confirmed accurate by modern microscopes. Yet there is a looming shadow here. His recapitulation theory that a growing embryo relives its evolutionary past seemed to crumble under scrutiny. Along with the list of titles mentioned before, Haeckel was also a eugenicist, promoting hierarchical scientific racism placing various races into categories ranging from civilized to doomed to extinction. It is argued that his works may have acted as a forerunner to Nazism. His views on race and eugenics, tied to those early 20th century ideologies, stain his legacy. Haeckel's work is a link between science and art, past and present, certainty and mystery, his impact on science extended well beyond his lifetime, and his legacy is recognized around the world in a variety of ways. In 1885, Haeckel was elected as a member of the American Philosophical Society, one of the most respected scholarly organizations in the United States. Two decades later, in 1907, he was awarded the title of Excellency by Kaiser Wilhelm II, an honor rarely given to scientists. Just a year after that, he received the Darwin Wallace Medal from the Linnean Society of London, one of the highest accolades in evolutionary biology. Geographical landmarks also carry his name. Mount Haeckel in California's Sierra Nevada stands at 13,400 feet, overlooking the appropriately named Evolution Basin. In the city of Vienna, where Haeckel lived and worked for much of his life, he is remembered with a monument on Herrenberg Hill, his former residence now known as the Ernst Haeckel Haus, houses an exhibition dedicated to his work. Nearby, the Jena Philetic Museum which he founded remains active in promoting evolutionary science and preserving his contributions. It's a curious feeling to uncover these details 
behind a book that contains this level of artistic illustration? Would you have different views of these illustrations if they were prefaced by the author's perspectives and theories? Maybe that shift happened within this very episode, and no amount of accolades or achievements can clean the blemish of his writings. Yet this is the record we have regarding this publication and its author. Overall, the capture of nature here is unique. The natural world is a curious entity and could easily be considered the source of all true knowledge. She has her flaws and her own logic. She has no effect without cause, nor invention without necessity. Literary echoes of Da Vinci, Francis Bacon, and even Isaac Newton. So when viewing this publication, are we witness to mere patterns or a glimpse into the mind of creation?